What up, YouTube? This is Steven, and I'm back with some news in regards to Miss Hayumi Hamasaki. So I retrieved this article from aramajapan.com, so shout out to them. And the title of the article is Share Your Memory of Ayumi Hamasaki for A Best 15th Anniversary. So, by chance, if you don't know what A Best is, it's Ayumi's first greatest hits album. You know, her first best of album. So, we are at the 15th, an the 15th anniversary of, you know, this, you know, groundbreaking compilation album. <clears throat> so, I'm going to read the article, get my thoughts and opinions as I go. And afterwards, give my thoughts and opinions some more after finishing it. All right, so here we go. Ayumi Hamasaki's classic album, A Best, has turned 15 years old. The anniversary edition will be hitting store shelves today. And by the way, this news is a bit dated, but nevertheless, it's worth telling. See, quote unquote, A Best was a phenomenon in the J pop scene largely fueled by a forced rivalry between Utara Hikaru that broke global sales records. Wow. <clears throat> so basically back when this album was first released, this album and Utara's album Distance were going like head to head on the Oricon music charts, you know, the Oricon album charts. And you know, both albums sold a lot, you know. <clears throat> All right, next, the album remains as Ayumi's best selling work and is the sixth selling or the sixth highest selling album in Japan. So, pretty much in Japanese history, Ayumi's A Best album is her best selling album as well as the sixth best selling album in Japan, period. You know, <clears throat> so, you know, that's one of those, you know, one of Ayumi's records that she holds, you know. <clears throat> Next, Ayumi's team has created a special promotional active web. Sorry. Ayumi's team has created a special promotional interactive website where fans can share their memories of her via Twitter. All right, so Ayumi and her team have gotten together, and I guess Ayumi is off of Twitter punishment, I guess, maybe, or either someone's doing this. Whatever. <clears throat> but the fans can share what they want to share with Ayumi in regards to the memories that they have of, you know, the album via Twitter. <clears throat> Even though I thought Ayumi wasn't doing Twitter anymore, it wasn't that, that was like a new story. And yeah, yeah, I'm sure you, you guys know y'all remember that story when Ayumi was, you know, posting the picture and doing like 50 million hashtags about, um, you know, weird stuff in regards to her love life. People were speculating like, hashtag, I'm done with him. Um, these are kind of like made up on the spot. They were kind of like to that, they were alluding to like a breakup, but it was like, I'm ad-libbing these things, but whatever. What I'm trying to say is Ayumi kind of went crazy on Twitter for a second, and then she wound up quitting Twitter, or either her people made her quit Twitter. One of the two. And she was going crazy, and she posted that, like a picture of her hugged up on this dude, which people assume was not her husband, and in, like, you know, on Twitter, she was doing these hashtags, and you know, some of the hashtags were reading something to the extent of, like, say, oh, hashtag, goodbye, oh, love, hello, new love, hashtag, loving is in my future, you know, new love is in my future, you know, all these little weird hashtags kind of hitting to the point that. They're like, okay, like, did you get a divorce? Is a divorce on the horizon for you? Who knows? 
Anywho, my bad for going on that rant. Let's get back to topic. <clears throat> All right. Next, once your Twitter account is connected to your tweet, well, once your uh, sorry, once your Twitter account is connected, comma, well, it should be a comma. Once your Twitter account is connected, your tweet is added to a giant collage of other fans' messages, recreating the a best cover. All right, so I guess I even has this big super collage on um, somewhere, somewhere on the internet, and it's going to recreate the a best cover with people's tweets of her. Hmm, I wonder why she's using the tweets. Well, I guess so. I mean, she's using Twitter. But I'm I'm still at a loss of why Ayumi's back on Twitter. I'm my bad. I'm sorry. I'm still kinda trying to process that. Like, why are you back on Twitter, Ayumi? Like, didn't you learn your lesson before in regards to like what I just spoke about like a couple of minutes ago? I guess she ain't learned her lesson. But then again, I guess this is promotional activity. So whatever. <clears throat> Next. Many fans reminisce on how they discovered Ayumi. Their favorite songs and how much of an impact of an impact her music has had on their lives. So fans are all you know fangirling out, you know fanboying out about Ayumi. Like, oh my God, Ayumi, without you, life has no meaning. Like, before I found your music, my life had no meaning. Ayumi, I I promise you, my life didn't have any meaning. But when I, you know, listened to this album, it was just spectacular, and it gave my life, you know, a purpose. <laughs> you know how um, Ayumi's fans be sometimes. <clears throat> but, you know, Ayumi does have, you know, songs that do speak to the human experience. So, I can understand why fans would feel a certain way when it comes to Ayumi Hamasaki's songs. You know? You know, like, say her songs, like Hanabi, or Memorial Address, you know? Game, even, or Because of You. Like, you know her songs kind of like have a like a meaning behind them that a lot of people can relate to you know and I think that's sort of a part of Ayumi's like draw as a musical artist is kind of like her being able to you know touch on the human experience within her music and her lyrics all right Next, the website is available in both English and Japanese. So, that's good because it's kind of like good to see Ayumi acknowledging her international fans. Because not all of her fans speak Japanese, at least fluently. And they still are interested in her, you know? Which is, you know, speaks to Ayumi's allure, you know, speaks to Ayumi's relatability. You know, speaks to Ayumi's appeal, being able to appeal to people who don't even speak your language, you know? And then at the end of the article, they say, you know, or they ask, rather, what are some of your memories of Ayumi? Hmm. So, good question. What are some of your memories of Ayumi? You know? Me, personally, I know my first memory of Ayumi was seeing her perform on a Japanese Music Awards show. Um, she won like the top honor of the evening and she performed twice and she performed the song No Way to Say and that was pretty much the first time I had even heard like an Ayumi Hamasaki song. I've heard of Ayumi prior to but that was the first time I heard like Ayumi Hamasaki and her music. Like, and plus it was a live performance as well. So, even more so. Um, and I remember getting more into Ayumi Hamasaki during college. I remember Step You being one of my, you know, favorite songs of Ayumi. And I, that was probably one of the songs that really made me go out and even, well, not go out and purchase it, but, you know, order online and purchase her album, Misunderstood. That's pretty much the only Ayumi Hamasaki album I have. Um... But, like, for me, um, I'm still kind of somewhat 
interested in Ayumi Hamasaki's music a little bit now. Um, but for me, more so, I, I guess I concentrate more so on the era of, say, kind of like maybe, you know, the Memorial Address era up to maybe the Guilty era, you know, between there, you know. Sometimes I kind of go and maybe listen to something that maybe a little bit before that, maybe like, you know, the My Story era, perhaps maybe a little bit back, you know, that far back. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I do remember purchasing, purchasing the album and I, uh, I enjoyed the album. Not every single song, but I enjoyed a lot of the songs on the album. And I enjoyed the um, DVD as well because not only did Ayumi have the, um, like the music videos on the DVD, but she also had the behind the scenes footage. And uh, as well, I re remember looking at the behind the scenes footage for like um bold and delicious and pride um especially in it it's, it resonated with, with me a little bit more because um that was shot in new york and i can be like oh wow you know i was really close you know she was in my country you know what i'm saying <clears throat> um hmm i guess let's see and i've you know i've done a lot of lyrical analysis of ayumi hamasaki's songs and I've posted a lot of them on my channel. And as well, I've done, like, um, even, like, the whole um, Instagram post analysis as well. I've done, like, I did three videos of Ayumi's um, Instagram post back when she had her temporary Instagram account for, like, a month. Remember that? Like, it was from about, you know, January 23rd. Well, it was from... December 23rd to a, around a month later. So like maybe January 23rd-ish, you know, around that time. Um, but I could go on and on for probably another um, couple of minutes. But I think I'll just bring this video to a close. So what are some of your memories of Ayumi Hamasaki? You know, what kind of like what was the... What kind of got you into, you know, got your attention when it came to Ayumi Hamasaki? What, what drew you in? Kind of like, maybe what, what was the first song, you know? Feel free to let me know. I really am interested. So, thanks a lot for watching. Feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to give me a thumbs up. Your feedback and support are extremely appreciated and extremely valued. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.